Welcome to this YSL tutorial. In this session we're going to teach you all about how to use subqueries in Microsoft SQL Server. We'll start by showing you what a subquery actually is and then explain how you can use them in both the WHERE clause and the SELECT list of an outer query. We'll talk to you about how to add criteria to a subquery to limit the set of results it returns and finally how you can use a subquery that returns more than one value. So let's get started. In SQL Server a subquery is simply one query nested inside another, usually in the SELECT, FROM or WHERE clause. As a simple first example, here we've got a basic query which returns a single value. It tells me the highest number of Oscar wins from a table of films. If I execute the query, I can see that the single value returned is the number 11. Unfortunately with this basic query I can't see any further details of what the film names are, uh, the film's release dates, uh, or any other details of the films based on this value. So what I'm going to do is use this as a subquery to find out the extra details of the film. The first thing I'm going to do is wrap this query up in a set of round brackets. So I'll open a set of round brackets before the select keyword and then at the end of that query and this will form part of the WHERE clause of what will become my outer query. So to start building that I'm going to select uh, some details, say the film name and the film release date perhaps, from my table of films and then in the WHERE clause I'm going to ask where the film Oscar wins is equal to and this is where my subquery comes in. I already know that this query returns the value of 11. So by writing a query like this, it's literally asking me to show all films where the Oscar wins value is equal to 11. If I execute the query, I'll find that I get two films in the output. So there's a simple first example of how to use a subquery. You'll find that aggregate functions tend to get used a lot in subqueries. So here's another example using the AVG or average function. If I execute this query by itself, I'll see that it returns the value 126, which is the average running time in minutes of all of my films. I'm once again going to turn this into a subquery by wrapping it up into a set of round brackets and then building the rest of my query around it. I'm going to select the film's name and film runtime in minutes just so we can check the values are being uh, returned correctly uh, from my table of films where the film runtime in minutes is I'm going to go for greater than or equal to the value returned by my subquery just because I'm going to be pedantic now I'm going to indent that subquery twice and then execute the query to find a list of all of the films that are longer than the average. It's not too big a leap of the imagination hopefully to convert that into a less than or equal to the average running time. So there we go. You can also use a subquery in the select list of an outer query. And I'm going to do it in this example to show the average film's running time in minutes as, a, as an extra column in the result set. So to do that, I start by, uh, just as I would ordinarily add a new column to my select list, uh, add a comma to the end of the current list, and then I'm simply going to select, copy and paste my subquery. It will be nice to have an alias so that the column is labelled I'm going to call this uh, average, if I can spell average, average runtime. And when I execute the query this time, I'll have the same subquery being used in both the select list and the WHERE clause. So far we've seen a couple of examples of using a subquery in the WHERE clause of an outer query. But things get even more interesting when your subquery itself contains a WHERE clause. So here's a straightforward query which shows me the highest film budget from all films released before the year 2000. If I execute the query, again I get a single um, fairly high value, but again I can use this to form part of the subquery. Everything I've written there so far, apart from the use statement, is going to become my subquery 
And what I'd like to do is show a list of all of the films um, whose budget was greater than the most expensive film released before the year 2000. So I can do that by building up my select list again. I'm going to include the film name and the film release date. And I'll include the film uh, budget as well, film budget dollars, so that we can see the values um, uh, are appearing correctly. Um, I'm going to set that from my film table. And I'm going to ask where the film budget dollars is greater than the value that's calculated by my subquery. So really all we're asking is to show this information from the film table where the film budget is greater than uh, 200 million or so. If I just indent these, this uh, subquery a couple of times, when I execute the query now, I'll see that there are three films in the database that are more expensive or were more expensive than the most expensive film before the year 2000. A subquery doesn't always have to contain an aggregate function. Here's an example that returns the release date of a specific film. If I execute the query, I can see that the subquery, or the query as it is at the moment, returns a specific date. If I wanted to find out if any other films have been released on the same date, then I can simply turn this into a subquery again by wrapping a set of round brackets around it, and then selecting several fields. I'm going to go for the film name and the film release date from my table of films where the film release date is equal to the result of the subquery. Just being pedantic again, indent the subquery, and if I execute the whole thing, I'll see a list of all of the films whose release date is the same as Casino. So far, all of our subqueries have returned just a single value, but it is possible to use subqueries that return a set of values. So in this example, I'm showing a list of all of the director IDs uh, where the director was born in the year 1946. If I execute the query, I get that list of ID numbers. What I can then do is show a list of films made by that list of directors. And in order to do that, I'm going to wrap up this query in a set of round brackets, and this will become the subquery again. So now I'm going to select the film, let's say the film name, and the film director ID from my table of films, where the film director ID is any ID that is not equal to, but in the list returned by this subquery. So it's important that I'm not using the equal sign here, I'm using the keyword in. If I execute the query now, I'll see a list of all of the films made by the list of directors returned by that subquery. So uh, I'll suddenly I'll recognize uh, Steven Spielberg at least, and John Woo. I'm not so sure about the other ones. For me, this is one of the examples or examples of a slight overuse of subqueries. I think were I doing this myself in the real world, I'd be more tempted to join the film table to the director table, and then I've got a much easier way to write my where clause. But it's still useful to know that you can use this form of subquery in the real world. If you've enjoyed this training video, you can find many more online training resources at www.wiseowl.co.uk.